Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel for this episode of My Daily Commute, Coronavirus Edition. And in this episode, what I wanted to talk about are the differences between bioengineering and biological science PhD programs. So quick disclaimer, these are just my opinions and not the programs that I'm studying under. So this was something that sort of confused me for a while, the reason being that I worked in a biomaterials lab as an undergrad and initially to me it didn't really seem like there was that much of a difference. A lot of the techniques that I did, or actually really the only techniques that I did in that lab as an undergrad were, uh, were RT-PCR and Western blots. And actually I didn't really do that, that much of the Western blots, it was, it was mainly PCR. And it seemed like a lot of the work still was done in the lab. You know, when you think of engineering, you think of people putting mechanical devices together or, or working with circuits and that kind of stuff. But this was an engineering lab and it was purely in, it, it, the lab itself seemed very similar to other biological research labs that I'd, that I'd been in. So I questioned the difference for some time and obviously now I'm a PhD student in a bioengineering research program. And so I wanted to share some of the thoughts and experiences that I've had and what I've come to realize as far as the differences between a biological science program. And by that I mean programs such as neuroscience, biology, immunology. There's also, for example, general biochemistry. Those are sort of the more biological programs. Now, as far as a bioengineer, what is a bioengineer? Well, let's talk about the term engineer. So if you look up the term engineering or engineer, you'll often see that that is associated with other terms such as design or optimization, building, right? And so these are projects that are along those lines. So what I found is that these type of research programs really fall into two different categories. And so the first class of bioengineering research programs, I would say, are programs that really seek to manipulate or modulate existing systems and optimize them in a certain way. So for example, can we build a, a device that can improve our diagnostic of a certain disease? Can we build some type of drug delivery system that can efficiently deliver a therapeutic to our tissue or cell of interest? So those are the first class of projects that I often see under bioengineering. So programs that are, or projects that are really designed on building something on or making a system such as a delivery system that I just mentioned very efficient. So how do you modulate the chemistries of the nanoparticles of the, the specific chemical compounds of your nanoparticles so that we so that drug deliver, delivery is as efficient as possible. That's an example of a bioengineering project. And you'll see that when designing these particles or designing some of these of these devices, there's a lot of math involved as well in terms of figuring out like how something is diffusing through space and how the or how or maybe looking at some of the physical characteristics of this particle so that's sort of where that engineering background comes into play so so that's the first one and that's sort of the more classic bioengineering project in my opinion the second one is where you're taking classic engineering principles and you're applying them to study biological systems so a great example of this is when people take some of the ideas of circuit design from electrical engineering and apply them to study cell uh, or genetic circuits and cells. So that should give you an idea of what that second class of bioengineering project would entail. And so to summarize that really quickly, in that first example, instead of looking at how and why something is occurring as you would in other PhD programs, we're taking what we already know and figuring out how we can optimize something or how we can build something, right? We're not worried about the why or how as much as what can we do with it? In the second example, you're still looking at the what and why of what's occurring, but you're applying these engineering principles, which could involve some of the computational analyses or some of the analytical approaches that you find in engineering projects, and then applying it to this biological question and figuring out like how and why something's happening. So examples of that could be looking at the mechanical environment to, to determine how cancer cells are, are traveling in a microenvironment, or applying your knowledge of fluid dynamics to understand how changes in fluid or flow can be involved in certain vascular or cardiovascular diseases. So those are some examples of that. So two, 
Let's talk about coursework. I'm an MD-PhD student, so this is sort of a big deal for me because I have a pretty strict timeline. I'm supposed to graduate within three to four years, and so coursework is sort of a big deal here. What I noticed when comparing programs is that obviously in engineering or bioengineering programs, there's a lot more math involved. You have to know differential equations. In our program, our first in our first semester, we take a rates and processes class, so we're basically learning how to model systems so a lot of this modeling work where you're um, modeling changes in systems, typical of the coursework that you'll see in these, in these bioengineering programs. But what's really cool for me personally is that there's a lot of diversity when it comes to electives. In my program, I can take electives in computer science, in stats, bio, chemistry, chemical engineering, electrical engineering. So there's a lot of diversity. So I've seen people take classes in signal processing, kinesiology, nanotechnology, I'm personally, I'm thinking about taking a statistical patterning, uh, pattern recognition class or sort of machine learning class. So there's a lot of really cool electives that you can take as a bioengineer because uh, you know the, the field of bioengineering itself is very broad and I think that that's, that's something that's really cool about it. On the flip side, these are often heavier course, course loads, uh, whereas some of the, and this is really applicable to MD, PhD students because from what I've seen, you may not be uh, exempt from as much coursework as you would be if you were in a regular or a more traditional PhD program. Now, some of those traditional programs, you may only take a couple classes, you may be exempt from uh, the core classes and only have to take electives. I've even seen some programs where you don't have to take classes at all. I've never seen that for a bioengineering program. Okay, and so the last thing that I wanted to talk about is the difference between bioengineering and biomedical engineering. So bioengineering by itself, actually both fields by themselves are very broad. In bioengineering, I think really here the difference is in the name. Bioengineering can be applied to a lot of different contexts. So for example, in my program, which is a bioengineering program, there are labs that are working in a more industrial context, so such, as, such as food processing or improving agricultural yield. So those kind of things which, that are not really medically related, but they're still engineering biological systems on a, large, or on a larger scale. Biomedical engineering, as the name suggests, it focuses on products that can be applied to medicine. And within that, you still have a lot of diversity. You can have products that are more on the mechanical side, the electrical side, chemical side, or uh, more, I guess, like cell cellular engineering. So there's a lot of uh, really good diversity there as well. But it's all within the context of something that can be applied to and have the potential to improve human health. Okay, so that's really it. So to summarize what I said so far, I think really the way you want to think about this when you're comparing a bioengineering program or a biomedical engineering program to a more traditional biological program is that in bioengineering you'll be way more focused on manipulating a system, optimizing it, or designing something such as a diagnostic device that is taking the information that we already know and using it to uh, make something. In the second case of a, in the other case of a more traditional biological program, you're more focused on the how and why something's occurring, the mechanisms that underlie certain physiological processes or diseases. So that's sort of the focus there. There is some over, overlap between the two. What I said here can vary from program to program, from school to school. So there may be more or less um, overlap than you would expect. For me personally, I always felt like there's a lot of things that we can know about a disease, but at the end of the day, we need to come up with a treatment or a, or a product that can be used, that can be translated and used for patients. And so that is why I decided to go for a bioengineering program, because I really wanted to take what I know and learn how to apply it in a way that is efficient, that can also be economically feasible, because let's be real here, you could design something that is that makes sense, perfect biological sense, but it may not be applicable because it's way too hard to produce on a mass scale where it can be used to treat patients effectively. So those are some of the considerations that I felt like I would learn how to account for in a bioengineering program. But that's really it. That's all I have for this video. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe. I actually did a more detailed write-up of this, of this topic on my website on worldwildmed.com. So definitely check that out if you want more information. If you have any questions or if there's anything else that you'd like to discuss further, you can always feel free to contact me. If you have, all right, and that also includes more general questions about MD PhD programs or, or how to get into these type of programs or just medical school in general. But thanks for tuning in and I look forward to seeing you guys next time.